Okay, so I think we'll wait a couple minutes, see if more people join. Um, yeah. If not, then I guess you guys have like a private lesson today. <laughs> Also, while you're waiting, just um, make sure to have your homework out if you did it um, from last last week. To whoever just joined, we're just waiting um, a little longer to see if more people will come in. And then we'll probably get started around 3.05. So just um, while you're waiting, just have your homework open and we'll go over that. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I guess we just have six students today, but better for you guys. Okay, welcome back to the Python programming class. Um, this is week three. Um, hopefully you guys had a good two weeks. Um, and yeah, we'll just get started.
So our agenda today, we're going to go over the homework first. We're going to do um, go over some review from last last week's class. We're going to then go on to um, more functions than accessing characters and strings, string methods, modules, and then we'll do a demo practice problems and then we'll give you guys homework. So we're going to start off with homework answers. So make sure you have your homework um, open and I will get that up in a second. Also, while I'm doing that, can everybody, if you did the homework or if you didn't, can you please put it in the chat privately to me so that I can kind of know how many people did it? Just say like, I did the homework or I didn't. It's optional, of course, so. If you didn't do it, it's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm seeing is most people didn't do it, so that's totally fine. Um, we'll just actually, what we can do, we'll just do the problems together. So like you guys can do the problems, like write it down um, on your own REPL if you want. Yeah. Okay. So these were the problems from last week. So instructions were to read each problem carefully and then create a new REPL file using this link that I sent you guys. Um, so the first problem, comment out the variables that have an integer value. So you were given these lines of code here and you were supposed to go through and comment out whichever ones had integer values so if you guys remember um, integers are integers are whole numbers and um, what's not considered an integer is a decimal so like 14.0 that's not considered an integer that's a double um, yeah so other things that are not considered integers is when you divide a whole number by another whole number, but it's not divisible. So it, re it would result in a double. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, this one, if you guys remember, um, modulus, it's um, the remainder when you divide something by another thing, that remainder is what's returned to the variable. So that's always a whole number. Um, yeah, input, input is always a string. Um, yeah. Okay, number two, modify the following program so that it will convert degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, change the degrees C assignment to F to C. Okay, so basically we have a function that's given us and um, it's called F to C and the parameters is degrees um, in Fahrenheit. And so the formula, you're given the formula to confer, convert F to um, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And this is the formula. And so basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to translate that into Python. And um, so here we have degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, which is this part. And then that whole thing times five over nine, which is again that. And then um, to make sure that your function will print something out once you call it, you have to return that value to the function. So um, here we're asking for input from the user um, saying what is the temperature in Fahrenheit and then they would type a value and that would then be um, translated into a float which is assigned to this variable. And then what we do is we would um, have the function use that um, float and calculate the degrees in Celsius. Okay, next problem. This program calculates how far an object will fall on feet in a given number of seconds. However, it does not produce the correct answer. Find and fix the error. So, um, let me see if I can open this up. Number three. Okay, yeah, so basically you're given G and the problem is, is that the data types are different, I believe. Yeah, so 
basically what you do is you have to turn this into a float. You have to make sure it's a float, then you get the input. And then you have to make sure that that input is also a float. Because when you do any sort of calculations, you have to make sure that the data types are all the same, or at least um, integers or floats. And so then you would change this to a float, of course, and then you would um, print it out and making sure that it's a string so that it wouldn't give you a concatenation error. Okay, number four, write a program using a for loop that adds up all of the even integers from 10, two to 10 inclusive and prints out the result. Okay, so even numbers from two to 10. So we would use a for loop, right? And we could have any um, variable, you could use even num, you could use i, anything works. For even num in range two to 11, and then the step is two. So basically what that's saying is start at the number two, stop at the number 11 exclusive. So if you wanted to stop at 10, you would have to make sure it's one plus because at the remember at the end, it doesn't stop at that number, it stops at the one before. And then the step would be two because you want all the even integers. And then for each um, integer in that range, you would have to add that to the sum variable, which is initialized as zero in the beginning, so that it keeps adding um, until the end of the range function, and then print out that sum. Okay. Number five, some cash register systems use change machines that automatically dispense coins. You always want to use the fewest coins possible. You should use integer mathematics to solve this problem. So A, the shell of the function called coins has been created for you to complete the input to, for you to complete. The input to the function is the variable cents owned. It's an integer which expresses how much change you should, should be returned in cents. Use the variables quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies to calculate and return how many each coin type should be returned to the customer. So I think we should do this problem um, together. Yeah. Okay. So we have input cents owned. The amount of change that should be returned is an integer. Okay. So here we have the shell of the function defined for us. So it's the function coins and the parameter is cents owned. And hold on, let me just move this. Okay, yeah, so we have to give the least number of coins of each coin type that we could um, have. So how do you think we could go about doing this? Does anybody have any ideas? You can just unmute or type in the chat, anything works. So remember, we're given the number of cents that we want to change. Um, we want to have the number of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, and the least number of coins that we could have. So how would we do this? Anybody have any ideas? Okay, uh, I'll start it off then. Okay, so to make sure that we have the least number of coins, we have to make sure that the biggest value has the most number of coins, does that make sense? So like, let's say we have 70 cents. So the least number of coins would be two, pen, two quarters, right? Because that's the most value that you can make out of that um, division, right? If that makes sense. So. The first thing we would do is we would define quarters and we would have that equal to cents owed and then integer division 25. Because remember, we don't want a decimal, we want an integer to make sure that we, that's the number of coins, number of quarters we want. And then for dimes, how since it's decreasing in order, we're having quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, it would just be the number of quarters or the remainder from the number of quarters and that divided by. 10, if that makes sense. So it would be cents, oh, the remainder, so that's modulus, so that's percent, 25, 
and then the integer division 10. So that's how many dimes we have. And then nickels, again, it's the same thing. It would just be cents owed modulus 25. And then again, modulus 10, because then that would give us the remainder um, minus the um, dimes and the quarters, the value of the dimes and the quarters. And then we do that divided by five. And then last but not least, we have the pennies. So this is just cents owed divided by 25. 10. And then for this, we would just have the remainder um, when you divide by five, because that's already um, the number of pennies that you would have. And yeah, so print the proper output messages. So here we would just say the string of sense own, because that's because right now it's an integer. We would say plus sense and do this error thingy. And then, yeah. And then we would print out um, the quarters, the dimes, the nickels, and the pennies. I won't write that out because that's a lot to write out. But this is how it's supposed to look like. And the return, yeah, return statement goes below. So if we were in this, oh, it's a, it's two. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay. We're running on here because this is the actual thing. Oh, yeah. So if you see here, 59 cents, that's two quarters, zero dimes, one nickel, four pennies, and 19 cents, 94 cents, so on. So, yeah. Do you guys have any questions at all about these problems? Nope. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So review from two weeks ago. Um, we did user input. So the variable name is the object that stores the user's input. And the input is always a string no matter what you put into that um, input line. Um, we also did uh, more statements, the format function for the print statement to make it easier to print um, strings out, and also the return statement. Um, remember when you're using functions and you want to print something out at the end, you have to make sure that you return a value to that function so you know what the value of the function in whatever scenario is. And for loops, um, they can iterate through lists um, or using range um yeah and then we did if loops we did if loop if else loop if elif else loop um we did while loops and we did um and that again that's basically executing a number of times before terminating and remember um try not um if if you ever have like a forever while loop like make sure you like you check for that in your code because that's um that can be like a real headache. Um, we also had defining functions. We had the two different types of functions, built-in functions and the user-defined functions. And that's when you create um, a function that has reusable code that you can use over and over again without just writing out that code again and again. And you can call the function after you define it. Okay. More on functions. So um, function definitions, there are two major parts when you're defining a function, and that is the definitions head and the definitions body. And the definitions head has three main parts. So that has as a keyword definition, and then it has the identifier, which is um, what the name of the function, and that's what you use if you want to call the function um, later in your code. And then we have the parameters that are in the parentheses when you define your function. Um, and we have the function body. So the colon at the end, um, when you define a function, that marks the start of the body of the function. And indentation in Python is what controls 
that's those statement blocks. So it, it's what controls what's underneath the function. Um, and again, if you want to return something like a value or something to your function, you have to make sure that you have a return statement in your function. So if it clicks, yeah. So this is just um, the steps in that you should take when you're defining a function. So first you would start off with the keyword def, which stands for define, and you would add the function name, which were, um, in this example is add two nums. And then you would declare the input parameters, um, which are num1, num2, and then you end with a semicolon. And number four, it's pretty important actually, um, when um, say you're doing another Python class in college or in like in high school, it's some teachers will grade you on um, the readability of your code and if you have comments throughout your code describing what happens because you need to make sure that anyone who reads your code they can understand um, what's going on so like optional is whenever you define a function just write like a brief description of what the function is doing um, and then number five add statements that do the task of the function so that's like arithmetic or like if loops or for loops or whatever you want your function to do and then at the end you would return whatever value um, at, uh, to the function itself. Yeah, and then again, make sure to indent um, when you're um, writing like the body of your function. Okay, so now we'll go over strings in depth. So strings are essentially um, a sequence of characters that like can contain anything inside, like for example, um, letters, numbers, even like um, symbols and such. Um, strings are also immutable, which means like, like they can change, I believe, yeah. Um, or they can't change. Um, and then operations on strings, um, there are two, which is addition and multipl like multiplication. So for addition, it's essentially um, adding to it's concatenating two strings together to form one string and then multiplication just um, takes one string and then repeats that string um, multiple times to form one string. And um, a method that you could use to find the length of a string is um, the len method, which is very useful. Um, and then there's also comparisons that you can do for strings. Um, this just essentially like compares the ASCI numbers that are associated with it, each character in the string. It just compares those values in order to determine which one is greater and which one is um, less and stuff like that. Yeah, so next we have accessing characters in a string. So when you have a string and you want to access a specific character in that string, you would have to do this, which is basically the string, and then in brackets, the index of that character. And so index is the position of the character in a string. So when you have a string, for example, banana, the first character B would have an index number of zero and it would increase from then on. So B would be index zero, a would be index one and would be index two and so forth. Um, you can also access a string backwards. Um, doesn't really make any sense, but basically what happens is if you want, um, let's say like the string at index negative one, you'd be accessing this last A and string index negative two would be um, N like that. Um, yeah. So you can also access like multiple characters in a string. Like let's say you want, you have a string hello world and you want to access only the hello. Um, how you do that is string and then in brackets, the start, which is the index start that's included and then um, colon the end, but that's not included. So you need to make sure when you have like hello that it's not um, H-E-L-L -L instead of H-E-L-L-O. So you have to make sure that it's um, you have the last um, index number plus one. And then um, just a side note, you're gonna need this, how to reverse a string. You basically have your string and then in brackets, two colons, which means um, backwards, and then negative one, which is like the step. So that's how many, like that's, um, 
you go negative one back each time. Um, and it could be any other negative value and that will print your um, string in reverse. And um, also like, um, like Alicia said, said strings are immutable. So whenever you get like, whenever you take an index of a string in order, if you want that string to be that index, you have to reassign it to that string. It won't just automatically reassign. Okay, so um, now we're gonna talk about string methods. So essentially strings are objects and every object has every object has a method. And like um, a method is essentially called to make an object do something. And um, the syntax of uh, calling an object to do something would be um, the object name, like for example, your variable, and then the method name, like for example, like len or um, count or replace, stuff like that. And then, so a few, two methods are um, the capitalization method and uh, the white space methods. So um, these are two different types of methods. So the capitalization method, essentially there's multiple methods. Um, that can change the case of the letter. So the upper method changes all of the letters in the string to uppercase. So you have to be careful on whether you use upper or capitalized because capitalized only um, uppercase only capitalizes the first letter in the string while uppercase capitalizes every letter. And then lower changes every letter to lowercase. Um, but however, you have to note that the original object is not changed. The, um, in order to do that, you would have to set your variable equal to the um, equal to the syntax of calling a method in order to actually change the original object. But if you just call the method, um, then the original object is not changed. And then the next type of method is white space method. Um, and essentially like, removes the white space in a sentence or in a string at a specific place. Like for example, lstrip would remove the white space on the left side of the string and then rstrip would move the white space on the um, right side of the string. So like white space is essentially anything like regular spaces, um, tabs, new lines, anything like that. And then um, strip would remove all the spaces in the string. Oh, yeah, and what I said in the chat is just um, um, all of these string methods that you could use in your code. Okay, so next we have is random math and more modules. So modules are basically libraries of Python code used to add additional functionality. Um, so when I say libraries of Python code, it basically means libraries of functions that are already predefined that you can call when you import that library into your code. So for example, the math module, um, if you import math, you now have access to all of math's um, functions like math.py, which is, um, gives you the value of pi math.e, which gives you the value of e, and like so forth. You can do square roots, um, sign, stuff like that. Um, there's also a random module, which is pretty important um, when you're coding. Um, sometimes you'll have a question where it asks you to generate a random number, and you can use a random um, module to do that for you. And um, so basically, um, random dot random in parentheses, which is a random function that is the most commonly used um, random function. And it gives you um, a random um, decimal from zero to one. So one not included. And so like an example of a random decimal that I would print out would, would be good. And so another um, pretty um, well um, used function is rand range and that for that, you can define your own range. So in this case, it's one to 100, 101 not included, and um, you get any random integer. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the demo, which I will get set up. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so first we're going to start off with creating a function just to refresh our brains on how to do that. So we're going to create, let me put this here. Create a function called my function that prints out hello, first name, last name, um, when you're given first name and last name as the parameters. Um, make sure to test your function using one or more test cases. So um, can somebody tell me how can we define our function to begin with? How do we do that? We're defining a function called my function. Does anybody know how to do that? You can put it in the chat if you don't want to say it out loud. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna define my function. And if you guys remember, we talked about it. It's, it's, we start with def, which means define my function. And then the parameters, um, like I said up here is first name, last name. So it'd be first name, comma, last name. And then we do semi or colon um, to signify that we want to start our, the body of our function. So we want it to print out hello, first name, last name. So in the function itself, what you can do is you can just print hello, hello. Um, plus first name, plus space, plus last name, plus period. Okay. And um, we don't need to worry about um, making first name and last name a string because when you're giving parameters, you have to make sure that it's already a string. If it's not, then you can't necessarily use that function. Um, yeah. So my function, so this is how we would call it. We would say my function, can you now, we'll just do my name. Can you install my name? Okay, so if we call it like this, because it's printing something out, we don't need to say print here, but if it was returning something, we'd have to print the value when it runs that function. So if we run this, it should work. Yeah, so hello, some Jeopardy Okay. For next, we're gonna go over accessing characters in a string. Okay, so let's say we have a string, hello world, and we assigned it to the variable string. And let's say we want to assign hello to another variable. So let's say other string. Does anybody know how we would do that? How would we assign only hello to this other variable? I'll give you a hint. There's brackets involved. So type it in the chat again. I don't want to be the only one talking to you guys. Okay, we have a quiet batch. Okay, <laughs> so basically what you would do if you want to only access hello 
um, you would start with the index zero, because remember H starts with index zero. Um, that's the first character in a string. And then we would do colon and end plus one. So right now H is zero, E is one, L is two, L is three, O is four. So if we want to get that fourth character, we have to make sure we do end plus one because end is not included. So we would do five. And that, if we print that out, would give us the string, hello. So slow. Yeah, awesome. Okay, yeah, so we get other string is equal to hello. So um, another way to write this, you don't have to write zero to five because basically um, Python is easy on you and they'll, this, the default value for the start, if you don't have a start value is always gonna be zero. So you can technically just write it like this, colon five, and it just means the same thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is a little more complicated. So let's say we have a phone number. Um, my, definitely my real phone number. Um, yeah. So um, we have this phone number and we want to access the last four digits of the phone number. So if you guys remember, if we wanna access a string backwards, you have to use the negative index values to get those last character. So how we would do this, um, we would assign it to a variable, we'll just call it last four search mail, whatever. Um, so it would be phone num, which is a string, in brackets. We would have to start at the negative value and end at um, the end of the string. So we would have to, seven is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Four. So seven, we, we'd start at negative four, do colon and then zero. But if I run this, it's actually not gonna work. Cause remember it's negative. So zero, it's, it's outside of the index. So what you would do is you would just not have any value there. Cause the default value again, if you don't have a value at the end is just the end of the string. So you don't have to worry about writing any value there. And then if we print it out, it will give us the last four digits. I don't know why it's so slow today. Okay, it's fine. We'll just let it run when it wants to. Okay, decided to run. Okay, yeah, so we have the last four digits, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, so we're gonna do in string method example. So we'll go over string methods. So if you remember from the sides, the syntax for a string for to, use a method on an object is object name, period, method name, and then parentheses. So that's how you would um, tell um, your computer for this object, um, perform this method on it. So let's say we have a string that says, I'm not gonna type this out right now, my happy birthday, and you're really enthousi enthusiastic about it. So you have, random capital letters. So let's say we want to print um, that string um, only uppercase. We would use the upper um, method. So that's just dot upper and then parentheses. So if we, oh, okay, it's fast. Okay, so yeah, it just prints everything um, in capital letters. And then 
we can do live string lowercase and that'll print out everything in lowercase letters. We can do, um, so because we, in our string, we have this white space right here. Um, to get rid of that, what we can do is we can do L strip, which is basically saying um, all the white spaces on the left side of the string, let's remove them. So if we print that out. Come on. Okay, we'll see if it decides to run. Um, yeah, I'll just continue. Okay, so if you remember, um, we said that strings are immutable. So basically whatever we've done to the string right now, it's not changing the original string. It's just printing out whatever the method wants it to do. So if we print my string right now, which I can't run, you. <laughs> you'll just have this string printed out because it's not changing anything from the original string. Okay. It really doesn't want to run. It's fine. All right, random and math modules for that. All right, so if you remember when we want to import a module, we have, when we want to use a module, we have to import it. So in order to import the random and math module, we'd have to do import random and import math. And so now we have access to the random methods and the math methods or the math functions and the random functions. So an example of a random function that we talked about was random, just, the method random. So we do random dot random. And that basically gives you a range from bracket 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So um, this bracket basically means it's a it's a math symbol. It basically means that it includes 0, 0.0 and um, the parentheses means that it excludes 1.0. So it doesn't it stops before 1.0. And if you see that these are decimals, that means that the random always prints a, um, a float. It never gives you an integer. It's, it's still not running. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so we can also do the rand int method, which is another method um, in the random module. And that basically gives you a random integer um, from the range um, 10, so I can do this 10. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, it works now. Okay. Yeah, so basically rand int, how it works is you'd have to put um, parameters into here, which is your range. So if you want to do like from 10 to 20, you would have to just do um, brackets 10 to 20, not included. Um, so technically 10 to 19. And the last example is rand range, which is like um, a pretty popular function when you're using like for loops or um, any sort of, when you wanna find any, like get any integer um, random number in a specific range. So random dot you do random dot rand range and then you do 10 20 so let's say we want like even numbers or something we would have to do a step of two so that's the third value so if you don't include a third value the computer assumes that it's a step of one and it's not a step um not any other step that's the default value so if you want a step of two you would have to specifically um say um two as third value so this is a random number from 10 to 10 to 19 with a with a step of two. 
Yeah, so the rand int, it, the, a random integer is 19, a random integer is 18 for this. So every time we should print out a different thing. Okay, so we'll go on to the math module. So again, um, for math, if you want to access like one of its functions, you can do math.pi, for example, and that gives you the value of pi, 3.14. Um, and then you could also like define, you can also use it when you're like defining functions or like doing any sort of thing um, involving math. So like, let's say you want to define a function that returns the area of a circle given its radius and you know that the area is equal to pi times r to the power of two, where r is the radius. So basically what we do is we define a function called area of circle. And the parameters is radius. And you'd say the area is equal to math.pi times radius to the power. And if you remember, power is two multiplication symbols or two asterisks um, to the power of two. And then you can return area to the function so that when you print it out, area of circle, let's say the radius is five, it would give, it should give you 78.54. Yeah, so 78.54. Yeah. Um, other methods are like math e, so that gives you the value of e to do square root. So square root of like 25 is five. So it'll give you 5.0. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of the demo. Um, we'll go on to practice problems. And yeah, we don't really have much time. I'll give you guys like five minutes to do practice problems. And then you don't have to finish. We'll go over it. And then if, don't, if I don't have time, I'll just send you guys the link um, to the answers. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, just unmute or text, me, text us in the chat.
Okay, I know you guys probably didn't finish, but should probably go over um, the answer. So I will stop sharing for a second. I can get this ready. Okay, let me share again. Okay, so these were the practice problems. So first one, write a function that removes all occurrences of a given letter from a string and replaces it with an underscore. Um, so basically how we do this is we would first define the function remove letters, right? And so we would say the parameters were a letter, the letter that we want to remove, and the string which we want to remove it from. And we would return string dot replace, which is the, it's basically a method that you would use when you want to replace a, a substring um, in a string with something else. And so you would say letter, you want to replace it with an underscore, so just do an underscore. And so to test this, we can do um, the thing remove oh letter e oh my god e from hello there. If we run this, yeah. So it'll take every E and it'll replace it with an underscore. Okay. Number two, write a function that reverses its string argument and use the test case below. So we have, okay, so we have to start off by defining a function called reverse because we know here that the function is called reverse. So we would do definition of reverse. And then the parameter is a string. And then we would have string is equal to string. And if you remember from the slides, how you reverse a string is two colons, which means going backwards, and the step is negative one. So it'll um, go negative one. And then we'd return that string to the function. And then we can test it out. Then print reverse of I love dogs. Oh, I love dogs. And if you run that, yeah, so it'll just basically print out the string in reverse. Number three, write a function, remove left spaces um, with the parameter, the string, which removes all leading spaces in the string and returns the stripped out string. The string may have multiple words. Note, you can make your own test cases to check your function. Okay, so we first off define remove left spaces, which is what they tell us um, the function is called. And the parameters is the string. So how we would remove the, um, the leading spaces is using the L strip method. So you would do the string and then L strip. And that returns um, the string without spaces in the beginning. And then you would return that string to the function. And some test cases are like here, I'll put it here. Like um, a bunch of spaces hello, a bunch of spaces X, Y, Z, and then see um, if it removes the strings in the beginning. Oh. Let's remove less spaces. Yeah. So um basically prints out the value of the string without the space, the white space in the beginning. Okay, so number four, write a program using a for loop in a random module that to display the results of rolling a pair of dice 10 times and adding up the results. Note your values may be different due to the randomness. Okay, I'm gonna hurry with this. So um, we'll just shorten this. We'll say one dice. So let's say, yeah, so we have, 
one dice. Um, so how we would do this is we'd have to import the random module so that we could use the random functions. And then um, we would have to use a for loop. So for i in range 10. So that basically um, iterates 10 times. So that's the 10 rolls of dice. And so we would need to initialize um, a variable sum to zero so that we can add that random um, integer to that sum. So we do for i in range 10, roll is equal to random dot rand range. Because remember, we dice have one to six. So we'd have to do a rand range of one to seven to make sure that six in, is included. And then you do sum plus is equal to roll. Or you could do, like also if you want, you could do, um, sum is, is equal to sum plus rule. That's just the same thing, just a simplified version. Um, and then we would print the sum out. Ooh, yeah. And um, yeah, and if you want to check if it's actually um, having you have like printing out random integers, you can do print roll in here. And that's a good way to like check um, if your code has bugs and you're not, you, which my code does too. Module random has an attribute and range. Oh, and range. Can't type. Okay. Yeah. So like using print statements is like a cool way to like figure out where um, your bugs are in your code. If you're like having a problem, you don't know where it is. It's showing you like a weird line number. So yeah. Um, that was the last practice problem. So thank you guys for coming. Um, the homework is at this link. Um, I will put it in the chat. Have a great week. If you guys have any questions at all, please email us. And yeah. Thank you guys. Yes, for Do you have a question? Do you have a question, Rithik? I don't know if your mic isn't working, but I can't hear anything. You could type it in the chat. Yeah. Do, do you have a question on that? Okay, I will, let me see if I can find it. Let's see. First name, last name. Um, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, yeah, it's right here. All right.